A sudden tear or sprain of the anterior cruciate ligament causes pain, swelling and instability of the knee joint. So in this video, we look at what exercises you can do either after the injury or following reconstructive surgery. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard and today I have exercise advice for you if you've experienced an ACL injury in the knee. If you're new to this channel, we offer tips, advice and exercises to help you manage your health condition with physical activity. So go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you want to be notified of when we upload a new video. An ACL injury is very common in younger people, particularly those performing very athletic or multi-directional movements within their sport, such as football, basketball, rugby or hockey. The injury prevalence is higher in women compared to men, and 75% of ACL injuries occur during a deceleration of the body and a sudden change of direction, as shown in the clip at the beginning of this video, where the flexion and twisting forces at the knee are at their highest, placing an extreme overloaded stress on the ligament. To give you some basic anatomy, the ACL is a ligament that attaches the femur or thigh bone to the tibia or shin bone inside the knee joint and its function is to maintain stability of the knee joint so that the shin bone and thigh bone don't slip away from each other. An injury to this ligament can be expressed as grade one, which is a minor sprain where the ligament is stretched but doesn't tear or feel unstable as a result. Grade two, which is a partial tear of the ligament fibers, which does cause some instability of the knee joint during certain activities. And grade three, which is a full thickness tear or complete rupture of the ligament, causing a very unstable knee joint. This type would not heal and would likely require surgery. The question of whether or not someone would opt for surgery to repair an ACL injury would be dependent on the severity of the injury the person's age and the activities that they wish to return to. For a younger athlete that wishes to return to competitive sport, then surgery may be advised as the best option. For someone middle-aged that had an accident and just wants to return to normal everyday activities, then surgery may not be required. Everyone is different and a trained physical therapist or orthopedic surgeon will be able to offer you individual advice after assessing your injury. In either case, there are exercises you can do to help strengthen the knee joint to improve its stability. And it's of the utmost importance that the graded progression with your rehabilitation is done slowly and methodically to avoid further injury to other tissue in the knee. People that sustain a secondary injury normally occur as a result of them trying to progress too quickly as they will be keen and somewhat frustrated to return to normal. However, ACL rehab will typically take at least a year as it progresses to attain full function, but again, this will vary depending on the grade of injury, what tissue was used for reconstructive surgery if applicable, which may have been the patella tendon, quadriceps tendon or hamstring tendon, and whether other trauma was experienced to the surrounding tissues such as the meniscus during the injury. So I'm going to provide some example exercises you can perform for each stage of your recovery, it's important that you get the go-ahead from your surgeon or physical therapist after your initial recovery first before embarking on any rehab exercises. It may be that you've been given ankle pumps to do immediately after the surgery or injury while your knee recovers to promote blood flow to the lower leg muscles before being allowed to do specific rehab exercises. When you do get the go-ahead to start the exercises, the time frame for each stage will vary from person to person and in most cases, they will blend together rather than be a definitive point where you switch from one stage to the next. Please also note that this is by no means an exhaustive list of exercises. And as I've already said, you would be well advised to get tailored exercises specifically for you from your surgeon or physical therapist. Keeping in constant communication with the experts is key. The primary goal of the initial rehab is to restore knee range of motion for flexion and extension, improve the function of the quadriceps and return to a normal walking gait, i.e. without limping. These exercises can be done for about an hour every day or more if needed, providing you monitor your response. To begin, doing something as simple as propping your heel up to allow gravity to straighten your knee for about 10 minutes 
will help restore knee extension. Taking this a stage further and activating the quads directly, you can perform quad sets, contracting the front thigh muscles to straighten the knee, holding the contraction for 10 seconds a few times a day. Then finally, you could add some resistance to the contraction by using a band or squishy ball against a wall to press the back of the knee into it to straighten the knee joint against the resistance for 10 second holds a few times a day. To improve knee flexion, you can start with heel slides, drawing the foot towards your bottom, and you can even use a large towel or strap around the foot to aid the range of movement as you draw the foot in. This can be progressed to static cycling with a high seat and low resistance initially, but moving towards a lower seat height for increased knee flexion and on a higher resistance to work the muscles more. For restoring the function of the quadriceps muscles, start with wall sits to activate the quadriceps isometrically for 10 to 30 seconds. This can be progressed to standard squats, ensuring that the weight is evenly distributed between each foot for 10 reps with an increasing range of movement over time. And finally, you can use a low step for the affected leg to step up and down on with the support of your hands initially if required until you can do this full weight bearing for 10 reps at a time. All of these exercises will help improve your walking gait, but you can also add in specific exercises such as walking backwards, balancing on the affected leg, and walking slowly to improve proprioception. It's very possible that you may experience flare-ups of pain or swelling in the knee joint in the early stage, which will indicate that you've done too much too soon. There should not be any pain other than some slight soreness of the muscles over the following one to two days after the exercise. Therefore, if you do experience joint pain or swelling, back off a little bit from the volume or intensity of the exercises. Likewise, if you feel good, then continue with making the small progressions rather than jumping forwards and missing out crucial steps for your recovery. In summary, stay disciplined. The goal for the mid-stage of rehab should be to improve muscle strengthening, primarily in the quads, and to challenge your dynamic balance whilst maintaining or improving your cardiovascular fitness. A mixture of these exercises can be performed on two or three days a week, allowing for at least one day's recovery between sessions, and would typically take place around six to 12 weeks after the injury. For quadriceps muscle strengthening, squats are a good start point and you may be able to add a weight to the movement now, such as performing a goblet squat or back squat rather than just your body weight. Or you can begin to elevate the heels, placing more demand on the quads. In terms of range of movement, research shows that the shearing forces that place demand on the ACL in the knee typically take place between 10 and 30 degrees of knee flexion during a squat. Therefore, beyond this range and going deeper in the squat will reduce the stress on the ACL as the wrapping effect of other tissues aid the support of the joint. So going lower is fine, but it may be that in the first phase of the movement, if you have additional weight, that you stick your bottom back a bit further to reduce the stress on the knee a bit. However, these forces are minimal, providing you can maintain a good alignment of the knee throughout the movement and don't allow it to twist or collapse inwards. Performing three sets of 10 reps will be sufficient, but just take care if you've had a patella tendon or quadriceps tendon used in the reconstruction of your ACL, as this might delay the progression of the quad strengthening. An alternative, which may also be considered as a progression, is the split squat, as it places more load on the front leg. This can also be performed as a Bulgarian split squat, with the back foot elevated slightly to place more demand on the quads of the front leg. The mid-stage rehab would also be considered a time when you can start performing open chain exercises. A leg extension machine is considered to be safe to really isolate the quadriceps muscles. There is zero load on the ACL when the knee has been extended between 90 and 60 degrees. So if you have concerns, you can restrict the movement to this range. But the shearing forces between 10 and 30 degrees when at their peak are only at about 3% of the load placed upon it during a leg extension, providing minimal risk to the ACL, but providing a good stimulation for the quadriceps. Other exercises for the quads can include step-ups or step-downs in varying directions, or using a leg press or a hack squat machine in the gym. 
It's also good to target the hamstring muscles at this stage. Doing some heel slides with the hips elevated, either with the feet on the floor or on a Swiss ball, can be a great way to isolate the hamstrings. This can be done with both legs initially, but progress into isolating the affected leg during the movement to make it harder. Other exercises including a lying bent knee hip extension, a single leg Romanian deadlift, or using a leg curl machine in the gym, can all be useful in strengthening the hamstrings. As with the quad exercises, three sets of 10 reps of your chosen exercise will be a good start point. The calf muscles should also be strengthened as they can help reduce the load placed on the ACL. Therefore, doing some heel raises either on the floor or on the edge of a step is a great basic exercise. In addition, and if you can get the technique right, you can also try this ankle movement with your knees bent to hit the soleus muscle too. Maintain the three sets of 10 reps as with the quad and hamstring exercise you choose, and you can always progress the intensity by adding weight to your body weight or change into a single leg variation for the affected leg. Finally, to improve dynamic balance, try the wide balance exercise. This will be balancing on the affected leg while you aim to move your foot in a Y shape on the ground, maintaining control of the movement and ensuring the stability of the knee. This exercise will improve proprioception, so we'll start to build up your ability to return to sports or daily activities that might be more challenging for the knee. The last stage should be preparing you for your return to sport, normally around six to 12 months after injury. And these exercises may not be applicable to someone who just wants to return to normal everyday activities, as it will involve movements that would mimic sports play. If you have built up enough strength in the knee from the mid-stage rehab, you may be ready to start running again if that's something that you want to do. To determine whether your knee is ready for straight line running, you should have minimal pain or swelling in the knee during or after activity, and you should be able to perform multiple single leg squats on the affected leg and have at least 70% of the strength of your non-affected leg during a leg extension lift. For those that wish to return to sport, you would begin to carry out jumping, landing, running, and multi-directional movements that would help you build up the skills and strength that you need for your particular activity. You should be able to single limb leg press 100% of your body weight for jumping and landing on both feet and perform 150% of your body weight for jumping and landing on the affected leg only. Plyometric based exercises that involve jumping and landing, whether vertically, laterally, horizontally, or even more complex jumping and spinning movements that might relate to your sport, will all prepare you for that final transition back to your sport. As a side note here, returning to your sport doesn't mean returning to competitive play. This may take longer, both psychologically regarding your confidence in your knee, as well as being physically ready. Another example of an exercise in this late stage may include movement training using an agility ladder. And I've done a video on this with a link that you can find in the description below. However, don't forget that these intense and complex movements should only be performed if you meet the criteria mentioned earlier. So don't lose patience and skip the critical small progressions to ensure your knee will be strong enough for these late stage activities to avoid further injury. I hope the information and exercises in this video have helped you today. If so, please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching and remember to stay active, keep moving and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.